Hey guys, it's Brian. I'm back with another video cigar review, and I'm kind of excited about this one because uh, before I was while I was setting up to do this, I was playing around with my uh, my machine, and I noticed there were a bunch of interesting settings uh, regarding sound quality, and hopefully this is coming through sounding much more like I'm there talking to you, and not so much from the you know through a tin can at the bottom of a well. So. But uh, let's not get into that too much. Uh, so what I'm taking a look at is a cigar with a name that I'm never 100% sure of when I look at it. But, uh, well, here it is. It's the, uh, I think the official name is the uh, the East India Company Classic Cigar Havana Blend. Of course, that's being Gurkha as well. So, But I don't believe Gurkha is actually on the name anywhere. Uh, K. Hansosha is, but uh, no, it's not on the name, so I guess it's East India Company. Um, I've seen it called several other things online, the uh, Gurkha Classic Havana, which is nice and short, the East India Classic Havana Blend, uh, uh, there's some other stuff out there too, I, I think people are confused by it, because it's got, I smoked another one of these earlier, it's got quite the elaborate band on it with you know quite a few names and a lot of shininess, and it's quite nice. Um, so anyway, this cigar was given to me uh, by the folks at Gurkha, or the East India Trading Company, as they uh, seem to be wanting to be called now. And uh, it was over, over Christmas, and which was really nice of them. It was kind of really unexpected, and, uh, I should, well, what the heck, I'll, you know, since I've got a bunch of them, I'll just go ahead and smoke through them, and I have, and, uh, you know, I've, I've had a lot of, uh, done, done my homework on them, I mean, over the course of a couple of months, so I figured, what the heck, let's, uh, Let's give it a whirl. Let's give it a proper cigar review, you know, more than just a week in smoke. So just kind of looking at it, it's box pressed, kind of oily, a little toothy. I was noticing earlier I've been handling it a little bit, so it more, smells a little bit more like my hands and, than tobacco at this point. But it had a, a pretty potent, uh, it's like an aging room, the tobacco from an aging room, like a stew or something like that. If you, uh, you know, put a bunch of tobacco into a pot and warmed it a little bit, it's really really intense and actually the the foot's even more intense it's uh like this really intense like barn or barnyard but not not so much the uh the the feces aspect of it more like the hay and it's intense enough that it's borderline like bordering on almost ammonia type of thing so it's that's pretty intense I'm looking it over you know finer veins um it's a little uneven little lumpy i mean just cosmetic stuff nothing you know, it's, I mean, it looks nice enough and everything, so, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this cut, and we'll get it smoking and see what's going on. So it's probably not a good thing if you come right back in. I've barely smoked any of this, and you'll, you'll notice, uh, there's not much of an ash on here, and that's because... And this has been across the board with all of these I've smoked so far, and I've smoked nearly a box of them. Um, they just, they, the ash is just really, really loose, really flaky, really quick to fall. And, I mean, I've seriously just been puffing on this for maybe ten minutes, and it's already ashed all over my keyboard. I didn't, uh, now, truth be told, I did knock it a little bit, but it, it took no, almost nothing for it to, to fall off. Um... And since I'm back, I might as well cover some of the details on it. I don't think I got to. So this is the Robusto size by name, but uh, it's actually 5.5 by 52. It's uh, The wrapper on it's a Mexican San Andreas. Um, the binder is, from what I've been seeing, is either is some sort of unknown or proprietary tobacco that they picked from somewhere, which is interesting. You don't see a lot of, you see proprietary filler, sometimes wrapper, but... Uh, not so often with the binder. Um, man, just maybe an interesting strain of tobacco. I didn't really look too deeply into it. Um, okay, uh, and of course the filler is uh, Nicaraguan. You're looking at with this in terms of uh, an MSRP of about just under eight dollars, seven ninety nine is what I calculated. So, uh, I mean, so far flavor wise, um, getting getting beyond the kind of eat. It does have an easy draw, which I actually like. Some people have issues with that. They like the milkshake thing. I like it easy, but I'm like that. Um, in terms of flavor, the flavor is pretty good. It's It's been a lot of uh, a kind of a mixture of a, a nice, like, subtly sweet chocolate, like a rich chocolate. There's a little bit of a kind of a drier kind of earth mixed in with it as well. And uh, 
and that's kind of what I've gotten so far. I haven't really gotten too much more. There's 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 a little bit of a there's a little rough edge to it. Um, even this early on, it's not quite a spice. I don't know if I'd call it harsh, but there's a little bit going on. So, but I want to keep this quick. So I thought I'd chime in and uh, give you the details. And uh, I'm going to smoke a little further into this, so this doesn't become an an 80 minute video. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I've uh, smoked down a ways. I've been really gentle with it. Um, as you can see, the the burn is a little on the uh, the uneven side. Um, I'm trying to keep it going properly, and I'm probably gonna have to touch this up or relight it here in a second. But uh, see, it's getting down to the the very large band, so it's gonna have to come off momentarily. So it's you know it's been uh, it's it's an interesting smoke. I gotta say. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if it has anything to do with that uh, proprietary unknown uh, secret bl binder that it's got, but uh, I've I've picked up in addition to that kind of the earth and the chocolate that I got earlier. I've gotten I've gotten at one point it was kind of almost like a a ch minty chocolate, like a, just a real light touch of mint, not not over the top, not something that like a any really potent or any strong mint qualities to a cigar usually is a turn off for me. I don't find this to be unpleasant it's an interesting thing so I've gotten a little bit of that I've gotten some of the kind of a, some of the edge of uh, like an orange peel but a little bit of the acidity a little bit of the bite to it and that, that seems to kind of kind of describe what I'm am getting more than anything else so it kind of it really really bites on you a little bit like that does without being like really orangey or anything like that a um, little bit of acidity I've gotten went through the retro hail I've gotten a uh, See if I can keep this thing lit. Yeah, it's gonna need a touch up. Oh, so that was a little, little, little something almost floral in that. Um, I've gotten, I got a touch earlier on, uh, a, a little medicinal quality to it that's not altogether pleasant, but not a a big, not a huge detraction either it's just unusual um and i'm wondering if they've got a really interesting strain of uh of tobacco for the binder i'm i'm just wondering if that could be it uh and that you know so far that covers it it's it's an interesting cigar it's it's been it's going going pretty well despite the fact that i mean it's it's kind of a mess to smoke it really it really is i mean in terms of the way the uh, the ash holds up and and uh some of the unevenness but I mean, if you don't mind that, so far it's been it's been pretty good. It's been pretty interesting. So uh, I'm gonna smoke it down. Uh, we'll get it get it down towards the end, and we'll uh, come in with a uh, a final thought on it. All right, I'm back, and uh, unfortunately the uh, the world outside my window seems to be exploding. There's all kinds of sirens and stuff. Hopefully that. You're not hearing too much in the background, so I'm nearly done with this, and it's, you know, more of the same. A few touch-ups, a yep, little bit of the ash just fell off there, and I'm not even hardly doing anything with it. Um, I better ash that before I wear it. Um, so not much left. Probably done with it at this point. Uh, yeah. So one thing before I get into my thoughts on it, I was I was looking at the uh, the Gurkha website with regard to. Uh, the description of it, seeing if I could find any if more about that unknown proprietary uh, tobacco, and it uh, it looks like the uh, the the proprietary tobacco isn't just the binder. It's uh, that was my being lazy and copying that information from somewhere else. It actually looks like it the uh, the Nicaraguan filler has some proprietary forms of tobacco in it, and you know it it, it all kind of makes sense. I mean, I was thinking about this. And uh, it seems like a very Gurkha cigar. It's the kind of cigar a Gurkha would make. There's those little things, little nuances, little interesting quirky things to it that uh, are that kind of make it different from a lot of other things you smoke, like that little little touch of mintiness that, that I got in the chocolate. Um, as I got into smoking it about the halfway point, a little after I had uh, shut off the camera the last time, I was I was starting to pick up a, more of a more of a less interesting black tobacco flavor. It was just kind of there. It uh, that picked up. Uh, I got some roasted nut 
uh, kind of a roasted nut flavor. It was not bad. Pepper. Um, it kind of ramped up a little bit, but it got it ramped up a little bit. But the uh, it seemed like the flavor kind of faded out, and we we're left with mostly just kind of a just kind of a black tobacco and pepper type of thing. You know, uh, some of the other notes that I'd gotten before were kind of pushed out. They were a little bit there in the finish. That's kind of the way it went. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's there's not a lot mo a lot more to say about it than that. I think it's an okay cigar. I appreciate them them sending them to me as a, uh, a apparently a, pr a Christmas present. I like that. That was nice of them. But it's it's okay. It's it, I don't dislike it. I it's not one I'm going to run out and buy a bunch more of. Um, it's better than. Uh, Say the Royal Challenge, which I, I believe that's the one I, I, uh, I smoked a few of the the preceding year or the year prior to that. I think it's a better cigar than that, but I don't think it's. I think it's a good cigar, and in the eight dollar price point, it's got a lot of competition, and it's there's a lot of great cigars at eight bucks. So while I I don't like it, and I think don't dislike it, don't think it's great. I think that Gurkha uh, fans will probably enjoy it because there's these like I said, there's these little Gurkha elements to it that. I think that people that that are fans of theirs that follow their products will have come to expect. So definitely some interesting things going on there. It's worth it's worth giving a shot, especially if you smoke Gurkhas, or if you're just interested. This is a little bit uh, more potent than some of the Gurkhas of the past that uh, that a lot of us are familiar with. So uh, yeah, I mean that jet, that about covers it. You know, I always say uh, it, it's. I, I'm not in love with it. It doesn't have a wow factor, but I think any everybody should at least give it a shot. I mean, it doesn't hurt. Um, and you never know. You never know. I mean, I've I've, I've had some Gurkhas in the past that I've really thought were great. So uh, I don't think this is one of them. <laughs> but again, uh, you know, thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope the audio came through all right, and uh, happy smoking.